Ende der Sucharbeiten in Antakya. In der vom Erdbeben zerstörten türkischen Stadt beginnt die Bevölkerung mit dem Wiederaufbau. Nach syrischen Angaben haben israelische Kampfflugzeuge Ziele bei Damaskus angegriffen. Dabei sollen bis zu 15 Personen getötet worden sein. The fact that there are no more cranes or diggers near certain buildings here in old Antakya means that the search and rescue operation is officially over. There are no more signs of life detected in these particular buildings. And this really seems to be a different phase in the operations here in southern Turkey. Some of the people, some of the residents and business owners in this part of the city are being allowed to come back and check their shops, see if they can find anything still worth taking with them. Uh, these are really people trying to pick up the pieces of what is left of their lives. Some 13 million people have been affected by the quakes here in southern Turkey alone. And the Turkish government has promised a new home for everyone that lost their houses within a year. This is, of course, a very ambitious pledge, a pledge that many here dismiss as completely unachievable, considering what they have judged as a slow response on the part of national authorities, so much so that civil society has stepped up and has replaced the national government in certain areas. A massive fundraising event was organized on Turkish TV this week, and over 5 billion euros were raised for the victims. But some here are determined to restart life on their own as soon as possible. This street will be in one week, maximum two weeks open. Uh, it will be again, the shops will be open. You will see. Really? Now it's 13 days. Oh. And every people die with deprem or in traffic or home. But people will die, okay? Catastrophe will finish right now. In Muslim, Islam, You can be in uh, yes, yeah, in English is yes. Uh, grief. In grief, you can be in just three days. After three days, it's forbidden. You have to become in the life again. Sirkan's warmth is already bringing life back to the city, but he is certainly scarred by what he lived and what he lost. What can we do? You, you told me that you cried inside. <laughs> Yeah. Um, did you lose anyone? No. No. But I lose my friends. Yeah. Good friends, many. Sirkan says it's on behalf of those who are gone that he will not leave Antakya and will try to convince his neighbors to stay too. The city needs them, he says, and the memories of those who died will live on in and through this place. Annelies Borges in Antakya, southern Turkey, for Euronews. Nach syrischen Angaben haben israelische Kampfflugzeuge Ziele in der Nähe der Hauptstadt Damaskus angegriffen und dabei angeblich bis zu 15 Personen getötet. Israel habe Stellungen iranischer und libanesischer Milizen attackiert, so die syrische Beobachtungsstelle. In Damaskus soll unter anderem das Hauptquartier iranischer Milizen nahe der Hauptstadt der Stab einer syrischen Division getroffen worden sein. Israelische Raketen hätten auch Wohnviertel getroffen, Dutzende Zivilisten seien verletzt. Das israelische Militär äußerte sich nicht. Rund um die Münchner Sicherheitskonferenz kam es am Samstag zu mehreren Demonstrationen rechter und linker Gruppierungen. Anhänger der AfD protestierten unter anderem für Verhandlungen im Ukraine-Krieg und ein Ende der Sanktionen gegen Russland. Linke Gruppen ihrerseits protestierten gegen die von der Querdenker-Szene initiierte Demo und die Sicherheitskonferenz an sich. Auf einer anderen Kundgebung wiederum wurden Solidarität mit der Ukraine und Waffenlieferungen gefordert. Die Außenminister der G7-Staaten kündigten München härtere Sanktionen gegen Russland an und China stellte zum ersten Jahrestag der russischen Invasion in der Ukraine am 24. Februar eine Friedensinitiative in Aussicht.